Are you tired of feeling lost in the world of investing and not knowing what to focus on? Do you want to learn which mindset you need to adopt to become a truly successful long-term investor? Well, as investors, it's important to have a solid understanding of the various rules of thumb that exist in the world of investing. And these rules, such as the rule of 72, the rule of 144, or the 4% withdrawal rule, can help guide your investment decisions and provide a framework for achieving your financial goals. But one particular rule is much lesser known and arguably way more powerful. It's the 70-20-10 rule and it can be a real game changer for your investment process and long-term thinking. So whether you're a beginner or an experienced investor, don't miss this opportunity to learn more about the 70-20-10 rule and how you can implement it in your stock picking process. All right, hey there, my name is Renny Zalman and in my view, most people do poorly in the world of investing because they cannot handle the short-term nature of stock markets. In the short run, stock prices are dominated by speculative factors, emotions, fund flows, market sentiments, and short or at best medium-term expectations. And this characteristic of stock markets was already described by Benjamin Graham many decades ago and then paraphrased by Warren Buffett himself when he said, in the short run, the market is a voting machine, but in the long run, it is a weighing machine. And I recently came across a very memorable rule, the 70-20-10 rule, that nicely illustrates what drives stock markets in the short term and what drives them in the long term. The idea was developed by the investors of Smeet Capital Management, who manage and oversee around 1 billion US dollars in assets. Between 2008 and 2017, the fund's investor share class generated gross five-year annualized returns of 16.1%, and they shared their ideas in an interview with The Motley Fool. And if you want to read the entire interview, I'll of course leave a link to the article in the description box down below. So according to this model, what drives stock markets depends on the time horizon that you are looking at. The first part of the model considers a 12 month period. And over the span of one year, according to this model, 70% of the return that you get from a stock, be it positive or negative, will be determined by what the stock market as a whole does. 20% will be determined by the performance of the industry as a whole, and only 10% will be driven by A, the actual operating performance of the business and be the valuation of the stock. So whether there is an expansion or contraction of the valuation multiple, or put differently, whether the gap between intrinsic value and the stock price is closing or widening. And if we look at some real world data, we can certainly find evidence for the accuracy of this mental model. For example, if we consider the 2022 performance of the stock market as a whole and various sectors in particular, then we can identify a clear pattern. The stock market as a whole has done fairly poorly with the S&P 500 ending the year down 19.4% and the tech heavy Nasdaq 100 index delivering the worst performance since 2008 with a return of minus 33%. So it comes as no surprise that on average, most stocks did pretty poorly in 2022 as this heat map here shows. There's a lot more red than green. And so the majority of stocks were unable to deliver a positive return. With that being said, even during this turbulent year, one can find many winners and some sectors, one in particular, did incredibly well. For example, the energy sector dominated US stock markets in terms of stock market performance last year, as highlighted by this table here taken from Terry Smith 2022 letter to shareholders. In fact, energy was the only sector that saw a positive performance with most major energy stocks even seeing double digit growth. And of course, some individual stocks did particularly well. ExxonMobil, for example, had an absolute monster year. And similarly, industry peers like Chevron enjoyed spectacular stock price movements as well. And what's actually interesting is if we consider the second part of this mental model and compare to the first one. The second part considers a longer time horizon and tries to generalize what drives stock returns over a 10 year period and not just 12 months. This time, the composition of the bar chart looks completely different. Over 10 years, 70% of the return that you will end up with will be determined by a stock's valuation and fundamental business performance. 20% 
by the performance of the industry and only 10% by how the stock market as a whole performs. And again, by looking at some data points, we can actually highlight that there is actually a lot of truth to this yeah, rule of thumb. We just highlighted the spectacular performance of energy stocks in 2022. Well, guess what? The energy sector in general is a very tough industry to operate in. I'd even argue it's a terrible industry as it's mostly commodity driven, giving producers little to no pricing power, which in turn leads to very poor returns on investment. If you consider the 10 year performance of the S&P 500 energy sector index, for example, you can see that the index barely breaks even despite the remarkable year of 2022, massively underperforming the S&P 500. And the idea that the company performance drives the long-term share price performance can also be visualized by comparing the free cash flow development of Google, for example, to the share price development. What you can see is that clearly Google's cash generation capability increased and so the share price followed. In a way, the second part of this rule of thumb reminded me of a quote by Joel Greenblatt in which he highlights that if you value a business properly and determine that the stock is actually undervalued, the market will eventually agree with you. Quote unquote, I have taught at Columbia for 23 years and I make a promise to my students the first day of class that if they do good valuation work on a business, the market will agree with them. I never tell them when that will happen, but in 80 or 90% of the cases, two or three years is enough time for the market to recognize the value of the business if you've done a good job valuing it. And I think Greenblatt would add that in the other 10 or 20% of cases, the market will agree within four to five years. And what investors should actually appreciate about this characteristic of stock markets, the fact that in the short term it's a voting machine, is that this very feature allows them to do very well in investing over the long term, hopefully better than the average indices. John Huber, he wrote on Twitter, this, so the volatility of stocks in the short term, is one of the big reasons why long-term investing is hard. No matter how right you are about the company, your insights barely even matter over short-term timeframes. It is both why it is hard and what creates the long-term opportunities. There is no free lunch in investing. Long-term investors pay a price for potential premium returns and that price is having to manage your mental state while stock prices ignore your long-term thesis. I also want to add one more mental model and one more thought to the discussion here. The mental model is called desire destination analysis and it encompasses the idea that whether you beat the index or not in any given year is yeah, totally irrelevant. What matters is reaching your desired long-term destination. The desired long-term destination of a company is, as we just outlined, driven by the operational performance of the business and the decisions made by management. Nick Sleep wrote in one of his shareholder letters, the only real long-term risk is the risk of misanalyzing a company's destination. And then lastly, if you've watched some of my other videos, you might know that I'm a big believer in portfolio concentration. However, I would caution you to go for extreme concentration because if you essentially place two major bets and the market doesn't recognize what you see in them for say four to five years, this can be incredibly emotionally challenging and I would argue so challenging that I believe very few people can actually deal with that without making mistakes or looking for alternative investments to in a way relieve the pain. So having some diversification is helpful as it allows some of your investments to work on different timeframes. And with that being said, I'm sure you'd love to learn more about another investing mental model. I recommend you check out my video on Monish Price, $50 billion rule. Take care.